And we're going to start off the next panel of four speakers with Bob Stein from Social Board. Thank you. Um, it's fantastic to be at this conference for, this is the third year, right? Oh, two, there was, oh, there was a hypothesis. Two and a half. Uh, and the, the variety of, of directions people are taking is tremendously exciting, but indicating to me that we have a long way to go. Uh, as a bit of uh, context, so the printing press is perfected in the West in 1454. It isn't for about, till about 40 years later that page numbers start to appear in books. So it takes humans 40 years to figure out the value of page numbers. There are reasons why it took that long, but it, it did. And I, my instinct is that we're just at the sort of baby step stage and 40 years from now, we're going to see uh, the emergence of, of, of some standards that are going to really uh, take effect and change the way that people communicate, which only uh, emphasizes to me how important all the efforts that we're making right now are. And I really appreciate the opportunity to present at this conference, which I know is, is focused on, in the main, in, on the open web. And the, I, we started Social Book about the same time as Hypothesis but with a slightly different perspective, which in effect was annotating uh, existing works. The, and I just want to show you very briefly uh, three examples. These are all live, There's nothing here is canned. Uh, this is a classroom at uh, NYU. There, it's a British literature survey class. There are 85 students in the class. Sorry, let me, we had problems setting up this. There are 85 students in the class. They're divided into three sections. These are the avatars on the left for each of the students. Uh, this student, Dan Chen, selected this text in yellow. He wrote that comment. Four students responded to him. And what you're seeing here is one of the threads in response to Dan. Uh, when you have a conversation with people who know each other, it's a very high signal-to-noise ratio, and it really works. All the teachers who have used this in the last couple of years have been telling us the same thing, which was a little bit unexpected on our part, which in retrospect it shouldn't have been, but they've said it completely changed the classroom, that students come to class now having read the material and discussed it, which is not, uh, not necessarily the case. And because of that, the conversations tend to start ahead of where they ever got to in the past. So Social Book uh, has really two important aspects, which I don't think are obvious to people. Everybody uses it, reports that it, it works brilliantly. But why it works is an interesting question. And I, I think there are two reasons, and they're sort of on, on opposite sides of the screen. On the left-hand side, you have the avatars for everybody uh, in the conversation. And there's something subconsciously happens when you are aware of whom you are talking with. It just feels more like a conversation. On the left-hand side, uh, we, you have the, the, the conversation itself. And there is something very, uh, it, it, it facilitates the conversation when it is laid out so clearly uh, for people to just, it, it, to read it and engage with it. Uh, one of the things we've worked very hard at at Social Book is to understand that while a conversation amongst people you know is, has a very high signal to noise ratio, there is wisdom in the crowd. So how do we give people, a, how do we protect the small conversation but give people access to the larger conversation? And an example of that would be hmm, this one. So this is uh, Moore's Utopia, which I'm reading on my own, but if I, I, or I could be reading it in a small group. But if I switch to community, 
I'm suddenly now seeing all the comments from people all over the world who have made a comment here, and I can read those, and I can join those, uh, those conversations right here. Uh, we've also, because I come from a background which sort of defines a text as, as anything, any piece of content, we now have uh, feature films working in Social Book. Uh, this is a uh, full-length feature film. And at any point in the time code, uh, I can hit the plus sign. I could make a comment here. No, I don't want Google to translate. Uh, and we find that, that students are having the same kind of very uh, rich conversations inside a, a film that they are inside of a, 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 a traditional written text. Uh, this spring, we will launch the sort of the, this has been sort of in a very private beta for the last couple of years. This spring, we are launching sort of the commercial side of Social Book. Uh, the Criterion Collection is putting a whole bunch of films in. Uh, Macmillan is putting all their books in. A whole lot of people are putting stuff in here. I wish I could say that was the problem, getting stuff in. The real problem is that uh, social reading at its sort of core, at its foundation, uh, is a, a pretty significant behavioral shift and getting people to commit the time to read something of, of, of length to read it closely is not trivial. Uh, last One last point is that this has uh, been developed uh, in a proprietary fashion by my, um, myself and my colleagues who are based in uh, Sofia. I've worked with them for almost 20 years. We would love to put this code into the community. We'd like to put it into an open source uh, form. We're just sort of continuously, we have been for a while, looking for the right home for it. If anybody, you know, anybody here is from a university or, or an organization that thinks that they could use this, we, we really would like to put it into the, into the open community. Uh, in part because it should be there, and also because a lot of our efforts now are focused on building a, a a distribution platform that this can sit inside of. Uh, Amazon, Apple, Kobo, n none of the traditional uh, reading platforms are, are friendly technically or uh, DNA-wise, actually, to social reading. And we, we, we know that, that in order for social reading to take off, it has to have its own distribution platform. And that's where a lot of our, our effort is at the moment. And uh, so that's part of the reason why we're delighted to, to make this open source uh, so that people can start using it. Anyway, thank you very much. Is there time for a couple of questions? Bob Glushko, University of California, Berkeley. Um, love this stuff, I mean, but it, I'm I'm, I have the same problem trying to teach a, a, a course that's being taught other places with the same textbook. We've had these ideas about shared user experiences from different student populations. But uh, there is a significant amount of noise in that when students might say, I'm totally lost here. I, mean, I, don't, I don't want to share that note somehow so much. But so there's a tension between the need for curation, which of course imposes costs on professors, and the need to have, like, sort of crowdsource and have the best stuff emerge. First of all, Social Book allows you to have a private note. Um, it allows a discussion to be private and not go into the community at all. Uh, unlike Rap Genius, where the goal, you know, we're basically there, it, their system was designed to work with relatively short, like, uh, documents. And the goal there is to create the best annotation. That's not what we're doing. We're really, we've developed a system to enable a, a conversation to take place, and we don't see the annotation, the single annotation, but we see the, the thread as being what we're protecting and what's important. 
And so, so it's... The whole thread would be moved as a hunk as opposed to just the best one common. It, there's, a lot, there's a lot more flexibility in social book than that in terms of what moves where. Okay. okay the, the, we could talk, I could show you later, but it's, it's not that simple. And, and we do have one example, or two examples of texts, books, which have been used at many, many campuses where the conversations are by themselves, but they're shared in the community. Uh, Chris Catterton, I have, a, I have a question. You say that social reading is a big shift and it's a challenge to get people to commit to that. I was wondering what your strategy is to convert more people, you know, get, you know, and start getting the network effects of broad-based participation. Uh, on the commercial side, what we're doing is we're starting off really with, uh, in effect, book clubs. Uh, there's a new journal in New York called The New Inquiry, and their editorial uh, board has chosen uh, Shulamith Firestone's Dialectic of Sex. And they have 20,000 readers, and they're going to, in May, offer uh, to their 20,000 readers to engage in a sort of group reading of the dialectic of sex. The people have to purchase the book from uh, for our Strauss Giroux, but through our system, it's pretty trivial. And it's one of those things where it's it's why it's not a it's not a hockey stick. Okay, it's a pretty slow growth because you really have to do it to understand its value. And it's not valuable, right? I don't want, not everything I read do I want to read so closely because it takes time, right? If you can not only write comments and you're going to write them publicly, which means you have to really think about them, but then other people, you have to read other people's comments. So committing to reading a long-form document in, in a social form is a significant uh, investment of time, and you don't do it until you've been convinced of its value. Once you've been convinced of its value, it goes forward. But, but that, you know, it has to be the right document for the right person at the right time. And so we, all, all we can do is keep coming up with opportunities. We're Infinite Jest. The, David Foster Wallace's agent came to us and said, I really want Infinite Jest in Social Book. So that'll be there at the beginning. You know, and it's a, it's a built-in community where it's not going to be people reading it for the first time. It's going to be the very significant fan base that's going to go in and annotate the hell out of Infinite Jest and start to have a conversation in a way that they've always wanted to but never could before. You know, so you think, you begin to think of, I mean, Brewster Kale always thought about this, about each book having its own page, in effect. You know, and, and I, I think we're going to start that way, that you know, people are going to take significant books and they're going to really annotate them, and people are going to start to understand, wow, I don't, I don't ever want to read a really difficult book by myself again. I want to read it with the help of everybody else out there. Okay. Thank you.